Hey VLA family, it is time to pick up where we left off working on our ELA 10A essay on the world's best villain. So we had chosen Lord Voldemort from Harry Potter and we are going to compare and contrast those characters. So, oops, picked up my wrong box there. Let's get to it. Um, when we had started this, I'll do a quick review because I know it's been a little bit since I did an essay. Um, we had started by taking the prompt right off of Edgenuity and we knew we were going to compose an essay that describes a villainous character in contrast to a heroic figure. We're going to use precise, precise words and phrases, revealing details, and sensory language to convey a vivid picture of a villainous character. We're going to establish a clear, distinctive, and coherent thesis or perspective and maintain a consistent tone and focus throughout the essay. And we'll use the six traits to evaluate and revise our essay with attention to detail, um, our ideas, our content, our voice, and our word choice. So we had visited the Purdue Owl and we had read some descriptive essay content. I have that little note there. And we had done some brainstorming. I had said, you know, some, some very common uh, good guy, bad guy, um, you know, couples that we know of, the Dark Knight and the Joker. Um, you could say Batman and Joker, of course, because there's, you know, different um, franchises that have done those movies. We had Voldemort and Harry Potter. We had President Snow and Katniss. We had uh, The Hobbit and Saran. We had a detective versus a killer, like if you were going to do a specific um, CSI TV show or Criminal Minds episode. Um, you could do a main character versus an addiction or their tragic flaw. Uh, an example of that I used was, um, oh, the chess playing show, The Queen's Gambit, that was just on Netflix because she is striving to overcome an addiction and also be the world's greatest chess player. Uh, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, of course, you could do Han Solo and Jabba the Hutt. Uh, Moff Gideon and uh, the Mandalorian, any of these are fine. Um, and of course there's even more. Any, any single uh, you know, bit of work that you read has a conflict in it and I would accept the conflict between the hero and their tragic flaw as their villain uh, anytime. So I had described Voldemort. Um, he has no nose. We know he's very reptilian. He's snake-like. He has a snake as a pet. He's slippery, slimy, he's moldy and damp. His skin is actually like a gray-green He's actually inhuman at this point. He's very power hungry, which is probably what made him inhuman. He's a murderer. He's a child murderer. Um, and he's experienced um, having his soul split and damaged. So Harry Potter is brave. He's clean cut. He's happy, optimistic. He wants to save the world and distribute the powers equally. And he's juvenile, young, and idealistic. So we started with our intro paragraph. The world is full of dark and light energy. Certain characters are born wanting to be in the light and do good deeds. Some characters, however, never seem to be able to come out of the shadowy, dark underworld in which they thrive. Two characters that fit this description would be Voldemort and Harry Potter. Voldemort is one of the most famous villains of all time, and his devious actions, as related to the righteous moves of Harry Potter, deserve to be examined in more detail. So there's our thesis, and we move into the first paragraph, or the second paragraph, that is about Harry Potter. Uh, we meet Harry Potter right away in the first book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stones, and he's a confused young man living under the stairs in his extended family's home. We see him being taken by Hagrid on his birthday to Hogwarts, the wizarding school. It becomes clear that Harry is a celebrity. He has been hidden with his extended family for years because as a baby, he unknowingly helped defeat one of the most evil and powerful wizards, Voldemort. When Harry is given this background information about himself, something within him causes him to rise to the occasion and step up to the reputation he has suddenly acquired. His actions and upbringings are very different from Lord Voldemort. So we're going to discuss Lord Voldemort now. Lord Voldemort is taken from an orphanage similar to Harry's upbringing. He has little loving family around him. Unlike Harry, when he hears he is a wizard with magical powers, he is not humbled by this gift. Instead, he acts as though he always knew he was better than everyone 
else and that this info is confirmation of that knowledge. Unlike Harry, who sees how he could use magic for the greater good of others, Voldemort begins to explore manipulating others with his magic as a school boy. So this shows how right away from the start, even as young men, they were very different. Um, I'm going to want to put a transitional sentence to get to the next paragraph in which we can describe, I would say, a scene in which they will um, really show their differences through some quotes. So I'll have to look that up, and that's something we can look up together for next week's video. So I will say, um, in order to understand the differences between these two characters even more so, we will look at a scene and dialogue between them. So now that gives us into our next paragraph a chance to describe a scene do some more descriptive writing and really paint a picture of what these two men, uh, well, a man and a boy, I guess he's a man by the end of the story, Harry Potter is, um, what these two men are like when they face off against each other. So I know I should look in book four, but probably book seven, uh, to see some of their one-on-one um, -on -one confrontations. So that should do it for this week. And let's find where I'm at, there I am. And I appreciate you guys sticking it out with me today, and we will look at this in greater detail next week. Thank you. Bye.